risk in their lives. We pray for those in hospitals, rehab center, and those at home trying to repair their battered bodies and lives. We encourage men and women and men who have been harassed, sexually abused, tortured and raped by their fellow troops to come forward when they are able to tell their stories so that we may comfort them and help them repair. Let their stories the horrors of war and for women and men who have been murdered by their fellow troops. It is our duty to honor them by finding the truth of their stories. They, their families and loved ones deserve justice. The children or the children in war-torn areas, children play and laugh and cry, not in the comfort of swings, slides, green grass and safety, but play and laugh in rubble, gutted buildings, shattered glass and contaminated water, who shiver from fear and hunger, who suffer from devastated families, broken dreams from relocation and displacement. And these are the only some horrors of war. Each year in Massachusetts, Samantha Smith, Chapter 45, Veterans for Peace, sponsors the Poetry of Peace writing project. An eighth grade student wrote the following. War, the yelling, the fighting, the shooting, the hating, the pillaging, the breaking, the dictators, the land wars, the dying, the killing, and me in the middle. Thank you. It was a mistake to fight wars for oil rather than developing alternative energy. It was a mistake to try to impose our will on others by use of military force. And most of all, it was a mistake for a nation to allow a small, rich elite to steal our wealth, attack our freedoms, attack other nations, and destroy the environment of our country and the entire world just for personal gain. Yeah. Today we stand here in opposition to those mistakes, and we demand an immediate end to the war. Yes. 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 Only one thing has changed. Today the question is, how do you ask a person to be the last man or a woman to die for a mistake. People in the military who are coming into conflict with the authorities for reasons of conscience. We are working to support Nasser Abdo, the first Muslim conscientious objector, are refusing to fight in Afghanistan. We're with Jeff Hanks and many other quote unquote broken soldiers who simply cannot return for another tour of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan. However, what's taking up most of our uh, days these days is a young man, 22 years old, he'll be turning 23 tomorrow. His name is Bradley Manning. Yeah. Yeah. He's accused of providing WikiLeaks, the Afghan documents, the Iraq War documents, the collateral murder uh, video of the 12 innocent Iraqis killed by a helicopter gunship attack. We veterans are here to protest and demand the end of these forever wars. Our government abuses our troops and our veterans and wind up killing over 100,000 civilians in Iraq alone. In general, we as a society ignore these wars and those who we sent to fight them. They are sent back time and time again under stop loss. If they show signs of PTSD, we give them psychotropic drugs and we send them back to the front lines. Afghanistan was not uh, uh, invaded and attacked to overthrow the Taliban. That was, uh, came a couple of weeks later. Uh, it was it was attacked because uh, George Bush uh, uh, demanded that the Taliban hand over Osama bin Laden and associates to the United States. The Taliban vacillated. They indicated they might consider it if there was evidence provided. So, but the United States refused to provide evidence. So you wouldn't accept that what happened and continues to happen in Afghanistan with the American and, and NATO presence is in any sense just, a just war, a just conflict? 
I think it's a very weak argument. Basically not. But uh, yeah, it, in it, fact, it, it, if, it, if you want to know the truth, I think it's one of the most immoral acts in modern history. One of the most immoral. And let me explain why. That, if you look back at October 2001, uh, the, uh, uh, the United States uh, invaded Afghanistan because the Taliban refused to hand over suspects without evidence. Okay, now, actually they had a right to do that. You're supposed to provide evidence if you want extradition. Uh, at the time, uh, the estimates were uh, there were about five million Afghans on the verge of starvation. And the estimates were uh, that if the United States bombed, it might go to two and a half million more. In fact, the aid aid agencies, which were forced to leave uh, when the bombing was announced, bitterly condemned the bombing. Uh, take a look, at, it's across the board. Almost all of them bitterly condemned the bombing. And many leading anti-Taliban Afghans, including U.S. favorites, very harshly condemned the bombing. I mean, you said millions might die within weeks. That's, which, I was reading from the New York Times report of the official I, I, I estimates. I obviously it didn't happen, but... but, but look, to say that it didn't happen is irrelevant. We, look, it, when Khrushchev put missiles in Cuba, it didn't lead to a nuclear war. And I suppose some party hack would say, well, you know, it's fine to put missiles in Cuba. It wasn't. It was criminally insane. If the worst didn't happen, that doesn't change the conditions of the choices. The point um, I'm trying to get to, perhaps it's best put in a simple sense, by going to another Internet uh, question from a viewer uh, of Hard Talk. Raphael St. Amour in, in Canada says quite simply, Mr. Chomsky, do you think the Obama administration should leave Afghanistan right now? Uh, it can't be answered in that form, because it doesn't matter what I think. What matters is what the Afghans think. Invading armies have no rights. They have responsibilities. The responsibil prime responsibility is to pay attention to the to, to pay attention to the opinions of those you're attacking. Now, if you look at the debate over Afghanistan, strikingly, one voice is missing. What do the Afghans think? Well, you know, it's not that easy to determine, but it's not totally impossible either. Uh, for example, there happens to be an Afghan peace movement, uh, which is pretty significant. Uh, their voice is totally missing. Oh,